Good evening, uh, and welcome to uh, Tuesday night, uh, another live stream uh, from uh, Tariyama Bonsai, uh, and we're going to be looking at Satsukis. Um, so welcome uh, to, to the live stream again. Uh, if you're noticing, if you're thinking there might be something a little bit different about me uh, tonight, um, my sponsorship deal with Just For Men has come in, uh, as you can see, uh, so that might be what you're thinking. Um, but yes, I do have uh, some massive scars. Uh, on my forehead, uh, where I came off, came off second uh, in an argument with a gate, uh, and so if you look carefully, well, it's, it's it's just disappeared, but it actually was spelt I T uh, on on the on the on my forehead, and I was considering putting a T on the other side as well. Uh, but I uh, I've managed to to escape relatively unharmed, uh, apart from uh, a massive lump the other day. Uh, so there we go. Uh, right, uh, so last time we looked at some defoliation or lack of defoliation on uh, beaches and things like that, uh, but before that we looked at uh, Satsuki Azaleas, um, and obviously today we're going to be doing that uh, um, again today. Uh, I assume that nobody said anything on the stream, um, so everything sounds okay, so I'm just going to put that uh, on, the, on the chat, sorry. Uh, so I'm going to just put that away, uh, and I'll answer some questions later. Once we get into the videos, there's going to be quite a few videos. There's three uh, kind of longish videos today um, about styling a tree uh, and going through some techniques. So we'll kind of like break them up. They're, they're broken up into to kind of like short sections. So we'll watch those and people can ask questions whilst those videos are going. And I'll try and answer them. Uh, and then there'll be some dis sort of discussion in between. Uh, you kind of know the drill. Uh, so last time it was just me just full on with the azaleas. It was just a full on sort of stream of consciousness. Uh, discussion uh, today is going to be a little bit more kind of uh, video based because it's all about kind of like the actual kind of like practices uh, and um, an example of kind of like how to style uh, azaleas. Uh, and people have great difficulty with styling azaleas because for various different reasons. But I think one of the first reasons uh, and the most important uh, reason is that they try and style trees that aren't vigorous enough to do so. Uh, in the introduction to um, Satsuki's, I kind of, uh, I hope I laboured the point that uh, what's most important is the kind of like the health of the tree and um, kind of like that horticultural aspect of, of, of the tree, uh, of working with azaleas and, and making sure that they are strong, making sure they're healthy, uh, they get enough food, water uh, and allowed to grow and, and kind of like regenerate. Um, and so kind of trying to work on trees that don't have that vigour is very, very difficult. Uh, and so we have two sort of trees behind me. This is the uh, Yata no Kagami, which was uh, on the stream a week ago and was barely in, in, in flower. Now it's uh, pretty much fully opened. There's still a few buds left. Uh, I'm not sure if I can actually call it uh, the, the, a Yata anymore because it's supposed to have a lot of different varieties of flowers. Uh, you can see there's only one up at the top here. Oh, there's another one in there uh, of the white flowers that are now gone. Uh, and so it's, it's, it's evolving into a different uh, variety. Um, so that needs to be, uh, that's going to be, have the, the flowers taken off of that quite soon because it will get too tired. Uh, now that tree is, um, it's not really vigorous enough to... Um, to be styled or have uh, anything done to it too much at the moment uh, and so that needs to build up some some, some vigor the reason why it's lost vigor um, is down to me I, I put it into a pot which is too small uh, it needed to be uh, repotted again this year and it didn't and one of the things with uh, my previous uh, last few years of having to travel around a lot meant that azaleas suffered um, quite badly uh, in the summer and things like that with uh, watering mishaps um, but again that's my fault rather than anybody else's so this is the that's the kind of tree that we would look at trying to rebuild some some vigor into it before we look uh, look at doing any sort of styling with it there will be a stream on kind of like how to uh, try and recover some azaleas because I know a lot of you out there have uh, trees that uh, have gone downhill and suffered um, got a couple here as well and We'll look at some some techniques and, and things that we could do to try and, and kind of like recover them. Uh, there's a couple perhaps you know that maybe are too far gone 
one of, as I said in the in the introduction, one of the things with the Zales is that um, the kind of like the integrity or the strength of the live vein. Uh, once that sort of disappeared, or, or the you know the live veins, the, the, it's, the, the that all sort of dries out and desiccates, um, then it's very difficult to get them back. Um, so we'll have a look at that in a, in a separate stream. But what we're going to look at to do uh, today is a a real kind of like uh, styling of a real healthy example of a of a tree. So this one here is um, something that came in this year. Uh, this is just a big bush, uh, and this is the type of thing that we could go in and um, style, cut a lot of the foliage. I could take this back to, to nothing. Again, that's going to be another example in a different stream of, of going that kind of aggressive. Um, but it's got all of these lovely long shoots. There's, there's stuff that's popping out all over the place. And so those are the type of trees that we should be looking to, to sort of go in and, and style. Once you've got that vigour, once you've got that kind of forward momentum, then it's very easy to, to redirect it. Again, going back to the ideas that we've talked about in previous streams and in the, the energy concept stream, uh, all we do with, with bonsai is that kind of uh, the generation and redirection of energy within a tree. Um, and none, I mean, it's important for every species, but essentially it's kind of like one of the most fundamental uh, kind of principles for, for Azalees. It's about getting super strong and vigorous uh, and then pushing it quite aggressively at times much much more aggressively than than we can do with with other trees um, as long as it's got that kind of capability to, to kind of bounce back uh, and so uh, one of the trees that we're going to look at uh, today or, or the only tree uh, that we're going to look at today uh, is uh, this one here I'll pull this up um, and this is a sort of large shohin sort of size uh, hanabin kind of semi cascade style tree uh, and you can see uh, before we started it's a big bushy um, bush uh, and so uh, that's got that's how that's been left to, to kind of grow for a couple of years I explain it in the in the stream uh, in the video um, uh, but it's, it's got that vigor and so we can push that back quite hard it's not going to go back to, to something you know to without any green on it uh, in this case um, but it's got the, that ability to, to sort of bounce back um, so that's that's one of the kind of like the fundamental concepts that, that we need to to kind of have in our in our brain when we're thinking about styling as alias. Uh, and then the other one is the the types of um, sort of the stylistical approach. So you know what do we make it look like? Um, now this again is is somewhere like an area that a lot of people could perhaps have some great difficulty with because a lot of people like want to approach bonsai from a very artistic perspective and. We talk about the Western way, you know, Western styles of bonsai and this and that and da 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 da. da, da. Uh, but azaleas, as I said in the in the um, in the introduction stream, um, they they don't look like this. You know, this this idea that we sort of style them as they as though they would grow in the wild, as, as I like to do with say uh, with maples, with beech, with pines, things like that. That's a that's an aesthetic idea that I that I hold on. Uh, sort of strongly to uh, with other species uh, but doing that with an azalea you can't because their natural growth habit is like this that's just what they do they just grow all over the place there's no um, they, they, they don't grow like trees they don't grow like any of the images that we might think of and so they're entirely artificial and so you can do essentially you can do whatever you want with them and nobody can come along and say that doesn't look like an azalea it's like well the whole point is that they don't they are very kind of like highly stylized they are grown like bonsai they they form into to very bonsai like images very structured very rigid bonsai like images but that isn't to say that you can't perhaps explore uh a different kind of uh, design aesthetic um you, you 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 couldn't make um a weeping style tree if you wanted to uh it might be very difficult because of the um uh, the growth habit of the trees and, and, and kind of like how they send out shoots and things like that uh, but there are a couple of um, artists growers uh, in Japan who have done that grown out and made these uh, weeping willow sort of style trees um, you, you know, essentially you can do kind of like whatever you want with them so there is a certain amount of rigidity in terms of making them look in very kind of like bonsai like stereotypical images but equally there is a certain amount of freedom um, if you wish to have it 
Uh, a lot of people do like that powerful, very sort of bonsai-like um, image. Uh, and that's one of the the, the attractions, uh, particularly in Japan, for, for, for the azaleas. Um, so, you know, whatever you want, azaleas will bend them to, 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 to kind of like uh, fulfill your desires, so to speak. Um, and so it's, it's a, kind of like a difficult one to say this is right or this is wrong with, with sort of styling a, a, a tree. When you are working with uh, previously styled material, uh, so something which has already been given a, a, a basic sort of fundamental structure, which most of us are, then it is very difficult to kind of deviate from that too much um, because the removal of large branches on an azalea is very difficult uh, to do without kind of like big serious consequences. Um, the kind of growing out on and thickening of a branch without putting it back into the ground and feeding it very heavily and giving it lots of sunshine and lots of water uh, is very difficult. And so trying to do that um, in the UK, for example, just, just don't, don't even bother. Um, it's it's enough just to keep them kind of like ticking over and, and pushing new growth every year. Uh, but to expect them to, to thicken up and, and to get, you know, massive diameter branches on them within sort of four or five years, is which you can kind of do in Japan um, if, if the conditions are, are right and, you know, you're doing all the right things like giving it water, um, you can get that. But here it's a little bit kind of different. So when we started to work with... Um, something which has that basic kind of structure it's always better it's always the, the best value you will get is to try and work with what you've got and make it into one of those um kind of stylized images of bonsai uh so i hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense okay there's no complaints uh, about the sound or anything in, in the chat so we're all good um so i hope that kind of makes some some sort of sense about the the, the, the styling and things like that uh, it's perfectly fine to make a bonsai-like image uh, with an azalea, because um, as I said, if anybody comes and complains, then just you know, ask them to come and speak to me, and I'll uh, I'll explain them what azaleas fulfil within the bonsai uh, world, um, and so don't expect it to do the impossible. Don't try and put a square peg in a round hole and things like that with them, and you'll get some great success. All right, so the so the tree that I just showed you, that one, it's got like a basic sort of fundamental structure of a um, sort of a semi-cascade type um, appearance. And so we have to go along with that one. There's no point going, okay, well, I'm going to make this into a, an informal upright and cut that big bottom branch off because it's just you're just going to cause dieback. You're just going to just waste that material. Okay, so with azaleas, it's all about sort of getting something with that really good structure to begin with. Um, and particularly for, for us, as I say, in the UK, like trying to find something with great structure uh, to begin with, and um, because it's it's difficult to, to sort of deviate from where you're going there. I try to talk, to sort of say about that without making it sound like you should buy all your trees from me. Um, but yeah, it is very much about kind of like picking something out that's that's got that good structure to begin with. So, uh, without further ado, we'll uh, have a look at kind of. Um, what we do initially to sort of start working on the, the, the sort of skeleton structure because really the the kind of like the, the how we work on, on azaleas is to is to really sort of set out that basic sort of fundamental skeleton structure with that real idealized um, branching structure and um, just kind of working to to create that, that, that basic primary secondary branching structure um, with a bit of wire uh, and then once you've started that, once, once you've got that skeleton structure, then filling it up is relatively easy because it buds back so much because it grows so well. Okay, but uh, you, you've definitely got to sort of put a lot of effort into into creating this sort of perfect idealized skeleton structure. And so we'll look now just at how to do that um, with kind of like the pruning before we get into into the wiring and things like that. And I'll answer some of the questions. Something's gone wrong. Uh, just bear with me a second. So 
Sorry. It's trying to find something that isn't there. Here we have a large Shohin sized Hanabin. The Hanabin flower is a very beautiful one. I can see here, uh, it's this sort of pink explosive firework like uh, flower. It's quite a large flower uh, with large leaves. Uh, and so it's very, very unusual to see. And they're often sort of styled as uh, very tall, upright trees uh, to kind of maximize the, the, sort of the flowering capability or the flower size. Uh, so it's very unusual to, to find one in this sort of semi-cascade, uh, sort of Shohin size. You can see, uh, sort of real powerful Nabari. Um, does need a little bit of extra work don't do it, sort of doing to it in order to maybe uh, to weaken this root a little bit. Um, but it's a, it's a it's good impressive Nabari, kind of all the way around. Uh, but for, for this variety, uh, it's a really superb kind of example of uh, a compact little showing ish sort of size tree. Uh, so it's basically just been sat around for a couple of years, uh, just sort of growing out, uh, building up some, some strength and vigor to, to some of these shoots. And now it's in desperate need of a proper restyle. Um, and we're also going to do a light repot to it. So what we're going to do first is just identify the main branches uh, and look to see the, to, to, to sort of define those main lines. Uh, now, if you're looking close here, because you've got two lines, two very sort of strong, powerful lines, branches, uh, one at the back and one at the front. Then we've got this little one that's sort of coming up off the top there. Uh, now, really, if we want to work with both of those two lines, we'll get rid of this. However, okay. uh, we just want to look at the thickness of those branches and just see whether or not we can, whether or not we might want to get rid of one of them. So, looking at the back. There's no real sort of back branches to speak of. Uh, there was one that was previously removed here. This is that big, thick, heavy, strong line that we were talking about. I think what we'll definitely look at doing is working with this section of the branch and taking it out of the back rather than taking it along the same line as the as the main this main sort of primary branch. Uh, so this one we're going to come into there. And cut back there. We don't want too much confusion in that primary branch structure on the inside there. I'll try and keep it sort of simple uh, because that's that was a this is a very thick branch that we've taken off there. A couple three years time, four years time, that's going to be even thicker and thicker and thicker, and then those two are going to be really kind of like up in each other's faces. That's just one of the first things to do, just to simplify that. That line out there. So any growth that's coming directly, any growth that's directly from from the underside of the branch, what we'll do is we'll just snap it off like that. Rather than cutting it off, this will create a little wound here. And rather than leaving a tiny little stub, so for example, so for example, we'll come in and we'll try and cut that branch off. No matter how close we cut to it, there'll always be a tiny little uh, section of that branch remaining attached to the base of that branch. And you'll always get new shoots and things coming from there. However, when you sort of tear it off, you create this little bit of a wound, which generally will callous over without the formation of new shoots. So I always tend to kind of like come in and just sort of snap them off wherever possible. Start off by taking anything like that off. Okay, and then in these crotches or branches where we've got multiple shoots all coming from, from sort of those positions, we'll just look at taking some of the weaker ones off. What we're looking at creating here is a real basic fundamental skeleton structure. So like here for example, here for here for example, the base of this big thick branch, there's a tiny little shoot in there, we'll take that one out. Don't worry about the wound. Okay, take a couple of these little ones off. This is going to bud back profusely. Okay, so just come in and tidy up. 
some previous old prunes. Okay. We've now sort of simplified that structure out just to the, just these very strong, vigorous, youthful shoots. I like that. You can see just, just those vigorous, strong shoots in there. So we're going to have a look at doing that across the rest of the tree. Removing the flowers as we go. So what we'll tend to be to what we'll look at removing is anything that goes directly up it's like that starts to, 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 to go vertically. Come in and take that out. In the middle section of the tree, we've got this relatively large wound that had been previously made. Good strong shoots come out from underneath it that we're definitely going to be looking at using. We've got one to the side of it, one above it. This one above it is still flexible enough to kind of be bent down. All right, so we'll keep all of those branches there just for the time being. We'll just get rid of some of these annoying little, real weak shoots from the, from, from the strong branch. Similarly, we have this previously made big wound here with a couple of branches around it. So we'll keep both of those for the time being, particularly because they're around the back. So here we have a case of this branch up in the top of the tree, really quite thick and heavy, which is coming out and splits off into two horizontal branches here and continues up to be quite thick and heavy. So what we'll do is we'll come in and we'll take off that thick section in there. Okay, we'll leave that slightly thinner branch just above it for the time being. Okay, so we want all of those branches just to come out horizontally. This situation here is slightly different. Right, it sort of comes out, splits off into two there, and then into threes. Because it's not growing vertically upwards, and also we could just wire and tweak that branch round so that those two are then horizontal. So we could just wire that branch, pull it down and tweak it around, just twist it ever so slightly so that those two are then horizontal. Here, this comes up really quite vertically. It's quite a thick and heavy branch. It could be difficult to, to wire and style that one uh, and move it down because the, the short, thick, heavy branch on the Nazalia is very difficult to bend. So what we'll do is we'll come in and cut back that vertical growth and remove the shoot here, which is growing back into the tree. Multiple shoots all growing from the same place here. We'll remove that obviously vertical one, thicker, heavier vertical one, and look to work with this youthful juvenile shoot here. The other thing I can do to make things look a little bit clearer and easier to see and wire. Just remove some of these lower growing large leaves. Hanabin is quite, can be quite a large leaf variety when it's healthy and, and growing vigorously. And so it's just gonna kind of get in the way. A lot of these shoots are all gonna get sort of pruned back. So we're only really kind of like worried about that inner section and up in here. just to enable us to, to apply some wire easily and see what's going on. So this type of growth habit is very common, you see with azaleas. Uh, it was pruned back up at some point here. And one, two, three, four shoots all come from very, very close to each other, uh, if not the same place. And so what we'd always be looking to do is to cut back to just two coming from the same spot. 
Now, which two you choose, you want to choose the two which are of very similar strength and vigour. So that could be two of the weaker ones, two of the medium ones, or two of the strong ones. But what you don't want to choose is one strong and one weak, because then you'll always have an imbalance. And generally, we'd always be looking to try and make them go, when we're building our fundamental basic branching structure, always trying to keep those relatively horizontal. Because it's very easy to get new shoots to come up off of the top, to fill up a... Um, to fill up the foliage pads, to add meat to the skeleton. It's very easy to get those shoots to come up, but it's very difficult to, to build a structure when you've got all of these things growing upwards that's compact. So the fundamental branching structure should always be very sort of flat and horizontal. In here, we have one of those situations where we've got one, two, three, all coming from that same node in here. And so, two horizontal, one vertical, in this situation, and in most, we're going to get rid of that vertical one. The only time when you might be looking to keep the vertical ones are when we're working on the apex. Okay, and then when that will get flattened out, and then we can expect to see lots of new shoots to pop up off of the, the top of the, the branch, which we can then grow to fill out our foliage pad. Okay, uh, so apologies for the uh, for the technical uh, glitch at the start. Um, my fault. Uh, so yes, yeah, so that's the kind of the um, going through and doing the pruning work, uh, that kind of like initial pruning work, the branch selection work, uh, in order to sort of create that um, idealized branching structure. Now it doesn't matter which um, uh, species you're working with, junipers, pines, maples, or things like that. Before you get onto wiring before you get into that sort of styling idea, it's, you've got to go through, and the, the most important job is that pruning to, to, to define that sort of beautiful structure, that idealized structure. Uh, and so what you would find at a lot of Japanese nurseries, for example, that have apprentices, uh, the master would sit and work on a tree. Uh, he would go and he would do the pruning, and then he would pass the trees on to the apprentices to wire. Ryan Neal spoken about it at Kimura's nursery. Uh, it was quite a lot the same for, for me uh, where I apprenticed with Mr Kobayashi and I know it's the, it's the same for other people when the apprentices are sort of lower down the pecking order uh, and so what that tells you is that the most important job is the pruning you prune to, to, to get that beautiful idealised branching structure and that's going to set you off in the right direction uh, and so um, dug out the, the video that we had from one of the previous streams about that idealised branching structure just to kind of recap over about that so I'll just play that on uh, now Ah, okay, so when we're looking at creating an idealized branch structure, what we need to do is imagine this is our primary branch, okay, with some movement in it. This can be both left and right and up and down. And then from that branch, we have secondary branches, which all come out from the outsides of curves along the line. Now, ideally, the separation needs to be very, very similar. And then from those secondary branches, it then splits off into tertiary branches. And so on and so forth. Okay, and as the build as it builds up ramification, it creates this idealized branching structure, which is very, very good for long-term cultivation of trees. And you'll find that out as you go along with your bonsai practice. Okay, and then as foliage begins to develop, we can get lovely uh, foliage pads of nice even density. Okay. Uh, so that was the, the, the video I did for, for a previous uh, stream to sort of talk about that idealising branch structure. Now with azaleas, it's very easy to create that kind of perfect structure where we get that spacing in between the branches and we get them to, to go exactly the way we want them because they will bud up everywhere. Uh, in the chat, Steve Koenig um, mentioned about a deer uh, eating his um, azaleas. And azaleas are designed to be grazed. They're designed to be eaten and to come back um, uh, aggressively from from being uh, eaten by animals and predators, herbivores. Uh, some trees aren't, and so, so coming back and thinking about the the stream that we were looking at with uh, zelkovas and elms and things like that. Zelkovas, elms are trees which are designed to kind of bounce back from 
herbivore action. Okay, so when they get eaten by uh, by deer, by other grazing animals, or by insects, they have you know more fungal disease. Any type of if they're susceptible to, to 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 a disease, they will evolve to grow around that, have mechanisms to cope for it. Otherwise, they don't survive, and so they can come back from from losing their foliage um, quite easily. Beech, on the other hand, in our climate anyway, don't tend to do that, and so how the trees evolve um, sort of, sort of, you know, is, is an important part of kind of like how we can sort of deal with them um, uh, in bonsai and, and azaleas are basically uh, have evolved to to kind of just keep sending out new shoots all the time all these new sort of vigorous sucker shoots uh, and if they are vigorous if they're in a, in a good environment they will, they'll keep sort of sending them out um, and you can go along and cut an azalea branch back to nothing to just a stem growing off of the trunk and it will bud up. It will send out new new shoots as long as it's vigorous, as long as the the root system is healthy, as long as all the live veins up to that branch are healthy, as long as you're not doing it right in the middle of winter. But even then, it'll probably still bud up in the spring because we used to do all of our kind of um, uh, the field grown stuff. Uh, they would they would get dug they were, uh, in Japan. They would be dug up towards the end of the year. Uh, we would have them all in sort of December um, as kind of like field grown stock. We would prune them back to nothing, as in no green, and then they would bud up straight away. But they are super full of energy because they're just coming out of the field. All right? But generally, any sort of time in the growing season, you cut it back to nothing like this, and it will bud up as long as it's strong and vigorous. And this branch here is young and flexible. It will bud up many, many sort of different places along there. Okay, uh, And so that's its response to, to being eaten by deer. Okay, uh, When we're looking at... Um, Sort of working with bonsai, we don't want to to, to, to necessarily go in and, and act like a deer and just just chew away at it and and, and hedge prune it completely. Um, but understanding it's 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 kind of like response to, to being pruned is is an important thing. Uh, and so there's basically sort of two types of pruning methods that we kind of uh, employ um, when sort of starting as areas. There's the one where we cut back to to nothing. Okay, and when that happens, there will be new shoots come somewhere along here. We don't know exactly where. It might be from the tip, but it's less likely. But we're also likely to get new buds sort of popping around on the stem. Okay, so it's a bit of a less sort of predictable um, method of pruning. When we take a, uh, a shoot like this, uh, and as you'll sort of see, a lot of um, in the next section, everything gets kind of like pruned like this, uh, and we prune back to where there's a leaf, like such. Then oh. Absolutely, the first place that new shoot, that new growth will come, is from the tip, because there's leaves at the end. Okay, and so you will absolutely get new shoots to grow from those tips. Okay, adventitious buds will also form, but 100% you will get them coming from the tips. Actual results may vary. This is not a legally binding contract. Okay, um, as long as all of those conditions that we mentioned before are in place. The tree is healthy, the tree is strong, it's growing gangbusters. Okay, so the prune back to nothing is a little bit less predictable where you're going to get them. The pruning back to, to where you've got foliage, you're always going to get new shoots come from, from the end. Okay, so using those two types of methods and understanding how the, the, the azalea kind of responds to, to, to being eaten, pruned, uh, is a kind of important aspect of uh, of styling. Um, before we go into the next video, uh, you may notice it's changed a little bit around here. Uh, I mentioned at the start of that first one, uh, when we eventually got to it, uh, that um, it, the sort of semi cascade and that sort of showing powerful sort of showing uh, style is a little bit unusual for for Hannah Bin as a variety uh, because they're normally quite thin trunked um, and elegant ones. Uh, this is uh, another Hanabin. This is a, a very good example of of, of one, uh, and this is the type of kind of tree that you would normally see. Um, so slightly larger. You can see the big voluminous um, sort of foliage pads and the large, slightly larger leaves. So that type of bigger style um, or more elongated tree uh, is a little bit more kind of suited to it. And generally, they they won't thicken. They're still quite a young variety. They've not been around for ages. Um, and so massive thick trunks of them don't really exist, which is why that little kind of semi-cascade one, when I found it, was just like, okay, must buy this one. Uh, it's great. So um, as a, it's a bit of an oddity, um, but it's not so far odd that it's going to be an impossible tree to, to, to grow and keep um, uh, and such like. But yeah, it just makes it, it, makes it a bit more interesting.
Right, so now we've uh, sort of pruned all of those branches and we've got that sort of structure done, now it's uh, time to sort of come and look at the, the wiring. Okay, uh, and so this might be a little bit boring, um, it might be very interesting, I don't know, but there's, there's some in, there's, there's wiring stuff in it and wiring can be boring for a lot of people. Uh, but it is important when sort of setting that fundamental structure for an azalea that you get the branches organised because we're looking for that idealised structure, we're looking for order, we're looking for regularity. Uh, and wiring will help you to, to achieve that. So hopefully this will work. Okay, so we're going to start to wire this tree. Now wiring in azalea, we use aluminium wire. Uh, and for this tree, we've got three, 2.5, 2, and 1.5 mil wire. Now there's absolutely no way that we'll ever be bending these branches here we're only going to be looking at work, working with the, the thinner, more flexible shoots. Satsuki is very, very brittle when it comes to being wired and bent. Some varieties much, much more so than others. Hanabin is a fairly brittle variety, but still relatively flexible um, compared to some. Uh, and so we'll just be focusing on these branch tips here. So the same rules of wiring apply to, to azaleas as they do to others, don't crossing the wire, uh, making sure it's in contact with the branch, particularly at the branch shoulders. Okay, the one thing I would suggest is that you use, if you're thinking of using a two mil wire, go for a 2.5. But we'll start off at the big junction here. And we will wire around. Okay, so we're not trying to bend that initial section. All we're trying to do is go through and wire the major secondary and tertiary branches. Okay. So I just go around gently. We don't need to go all the way out towards the end because we're not going to use all of that. Okay, so we'll just go one more coil around and then we'll stop there. So soft hands, being delicate, not moving the branch around too much as we're applying the wire. It's very important. We'll just stop here. So we've got we're basically sort of stopping where we're getting in towards the, the new leaves. Okay. Okay, so we applied the wire in such a way that now I can come in and join these two together. Come around here and join the others together relatively easily. So we'll drop down a gauge and do those ones. So as with most species, azaleas are very weak, the branches are very weak at the shoulder, at the branch union, They're holding the base of the branch very tightly and securely when the wire is being applied initially is very important so that you don't tear it off. So we just get all the way out to that end. One, two, three, four in there. Don't worry, we're going to shorten that. Okay, so we're now getting in towards the to where the leaves are. We don't need to go much further. So we want to always, when we're starting off with the wire, always make sure we're running, we join up with the existing wire. We're running alongside it, not crossing over. Make sure that first coil is lovely and tight because that's where all the strength comes from. Okay, let's try and not trap these, these leaves because we're going to cut back to them. So let's just make sure that's lovely and tight there. So this wire that's being applied to the branch is now almost as thick as the, the shoot itself. 
So in a situation like this, we have to be doubly, triply careful with the application so as not to damage the branch. A lot of these shoots are brand new, fresh shoots this year, and so they are very soft and tender. As previously mentioned, watch what my hands are doing, see how I try to be delicate and non-invasive as possible, using extended fingers rather than going in with a fist uh, and attacking from underneath uh, and from above rather than going straight through. Okay, I'm going slowly to show you all of the important techniques. Okay, but that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven wide together. This is the only one that's not really wide with anything else. Everything else is joined up. So you can see the branches. Another wise up crossing. Nice even spacing between all of the coils. So what we want to do with this branch is bring it down, create some volume to it. Okay, and we're going to want it to, to try and get it to probably about this length. The further this gets away from the trunk, the more elongated the design will be. We don't necessarily want that. We want to try and keep the focus on the attention on the trunk because it's so big. However, we can't really make this variety massively compact and tiny because of its growth habit. And so we're not gonna be trying to bring it in all the way into there. We want a certain amount of length in order to surface area for flowering and such like. Okay, so we're not gonna be trying to bend this section here, the, the, thicker, the thicker bit, it's never not gonna happen. So we're already going to be able to bend the, the more flexible shoots. Now this is where the success or failure of your wiring will come into, into show because it'll snap. Okay, so when we come to bend, what we do is just massage the branch around. Always making sure that there's wire on the spine Okay, and I'll put some movement into the into the branch as well. Okay, so the first branch that I, that I put movement into is the main line of the branch. Everything else will then flow from, from that. Okay, so we put a little bit of downward movement in it, a little bit of upward movement, a little bit of left, a little bit of right, just so that it comes out nicely. It's going to compact it a little bit. Okay. So there's that main line. So we work on our main line first. Okay, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, shorten it all the way back to where we have those leaves. And then everything else flows sympathetically to that. So we're gonna do something very similar with the, with the neighboring branch. Put that into position cut back do this cut back thin this end section out
Now this branch here, we want the, 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 the foliage pad to come in a little bit. So this one's really, really quite long. So we're actually gonna come in and cut that one back further than we've actually wired in there. Okay. And then this one that we have kind of growing upwards and over the top is going to just get laid over. Okay, downward shoot comes off. We're going to cut those back anyway. Just gets laid over the top like that and then prune back to where we have some foliage. So just with the six wires and a little bit of movement and then the pruning back to shape, we've got our skeleton structure, the basis of our skeleton structure for that foliage pad. These smaller ones on the inside here, once we've uh, positioned some of the other branches, we'll look as to whether or not we want to wire them or not, but to be honest, I doubt it. Very difficult to wire some of those those real fine older branches on the inside. But I wouldn't be using anything less than 1.5 mil wire because of the brittle nature of the tree. So this branch here, we have nothing to to kind of anchor it onto. So it's just one wire by itself. But ideally, we always want to be wiring two branches together. And always start with the thicker branches. Okay, we have one, two, three all here together. Let's get rid of the vertical one. Get rid of that one as well. Wire that we're now applying is way thicker than the branch itself. Okay, so here my left hand is of absolute essential importance to not allow the branch to twist or to become damaged. So I'm just going to come in with my wire cutters and use them. Okay, let's try and not trap that, that leaf in there. Oh, yeah, my bugger. Okay, try and not trap that leaf. So I'm gonna use my wire cutters just to help twist around and my left hand here is holding that very, very tightly so it's not gonna twist anything. I'm twisting this wire around very loosely so that it's not really tightly in contact with the, the, uh, the, the branch itself. Now I can run another wire over the top there, round and onto that one. Okay, so we drop down to two mil. Now this is kind of on the, on the verge of it being too thick a wire for this thick for the for these branches okay but if you correctly apply the thicker wire by not allowing it to, to, to damage the branches see that's that left hand that's holding in there is absolutely key to stop the wire from twisting around and damaging the the base of the branch okay so I'm not not letting go of that at all until both of my wires are nice and tightly secure on there. And then I can come across. And see, as I'm moving this wire, this one wants to move. So I've really got to make sure that that doesn't happen. By using my left hand in there. So what we're going to do is just fan it out. So the outline of the of the of this foliage pad is going to go all the way around, nice and even. And then come in and cut back to shape, ideally cutting to where we have some leaves. So we'll cut just above where we have leaves. 
if we can. If not, it won't really matter too much because we're just going to get an explosion of growth. And then the one that's ever so slightly above, this is going to the one that gives us the volume to the foliage pad. Take some of those bigger leaves off. That one's clearly going to be too long there. Okay, because we're looking for that stepped or that, that sort of rounded foliage pad image. Okay, so that one could just sort of sit over the over there. Remove that big leaf in there. The only thing to do is just to trim one shoot back a little bit there. Just by cutting that back, it's going to stimulate new growth to come. And then we're good to go with that branch. Um, so yes, that's about uh, kind of like that wiring and the styling of that, that sort of primary branch. So you can see the importance of kind of getting the, you know, the wire on there uh, correctly. And um, it's after nine o'clock. Um, and so I'm quite happy to talk about my fingering technique uh, because it's very, very important to have very um, sort of strong, uh, soft and delicate fingers when working with azaleas, but that's true for, for, for any species. Um, and without wanting to, to get into a deep, dark hole that I can't dig myself out of um, in terms of kind of uh, gender stereotypes and such like, what you tend to find um, is that uh, there are a lot of ladies who are very good at that kind of like delicate work. Um, uh, you, I mean, men as well. I mean, like sort of dentists and, and people who've got very, sort of very fine, um, dexterous type of um, you know, sort of fine work uh, but you know sort of ladies who perhaps do like sort of needlepoint um, and, you know knitting and things like that that kind of manual dexterity uh, where the, the, the fingers are always kind of like active and having to or piano players where you're, you're having to, 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 to use all of your fingers um, sort of independently from each other uh, you tend to find people like that um, uh, become uh, very good at wiring azaleas and those sort of more delicate species because, um, as I said, uh, and I think in the next video as well, I've kind of gone to repeat it, it's that they're, they're really easy to damage um, through either wiring or, or, or bending and, and, and things like that. Um, and one of the funniest things I've ever seen um, was uh, Mr. Kimura uh, doing a demonstration on, on Azalea's. Um, for some reason he was, I mean, I don't know why, he was invited to do um, some, something up at a, a Satsuki show. Um, uh, one time, and um, <laughs> uh, it was just he was so he's wiring up these branches, and like he's you know the greatest wirer for for conifers, uh, but he was wiring up these trees as though they were conifers, and then trying to kind of like uh, bend the branches and stuff, and it was just crack after crack after crack after crack, and it was just like the the, the chief was there and I were there, we 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 were both just kind of like chuckling to ourselves, um, because when you're trying to bend thick big thick branches it's just not going to happen because they're, they're not supposed to be that thick and woody there is no gear there's no sort of flexibility for that and this is going to come up again uh, and so in situations like that it's better just to kind of like cut it off and get a new flush of growth and then just start working with those um, so knowing what to wire and how to wire it is very very important for, for, for azaleas and this is going to get covered again uh, but one of the uh, somebody mentioned in the chat uh, about wiring really fine and delicate stuff uh, or, or this year's growth. A lot of those branches that you saw there, some of that would have been uh, this year's growth. Um, but it's strong, okay. And so it's it's the strength of the of the of the, of the growth that's, that's, that's important. When they're real sort of soft and, and tiny and delicate, then then it's always best to, to leave them alone because they will tear off very very easily. Uh, and so just learning that through through experience is very important. Uh, and one of the good things about working with azaleas is that it doesn't matter if you crack a branch or break a branch or it, it tears off because they bud up so profusely and you can get big long extensions out if, as long as the tree is healthy and strong within a relatively short period of time. So they're very, very forgiving from that aspect. Okay. <clears throat> one of the other things that um, is kind of important to note is that kind of like leaving all those, those sort of branches quite long to begin with but not wiring all the way out to the tip positioning them and then pruning back to, to sort of to shape okay so that's kind of like a, a really important aspect of, 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 
the, the kind of the styling of it, wiring all the branches all the way out to the end, wiring it, and then coming and coming back is just it's just pointless. So you just kind of like you have to imagine where your foliage pad is going to be, wire out to roughly around about that sort of position, bend it and and, and shape it. And it's always easier to bend a, a longer branch than a shorter one. Okay, the minute you kind of like come in and cut it, it becomes very difficult to bend. Uh, and so bend it first, then come back in and cut. Okay, right. So we'll look at how to then go through and uh, sort of uh, finish off the, um, uh, the the sort of the wiring and styling. And there is a lot more kind of um, sort of close-ups of some of the wiring and, and sort of really sort of focusing on that um, the, the fingering technique in there. Uh, and so it might be, like I say, it might be. I mean, I don't know whether you like it or not, but it's it, it's here, so you can just watch it. <laughs> So now the branch has been wired and styled a little bit and we've put, sort of pushed it around. This big thick heavy branch that comes out here, we now know that we don't need this section of it here and we can just work with trying to push it even further back around there because we've managed to get this section around and fill in some space. And so these two here are kind of like competing with each other. And then once that's been cut as flush as possible, just going to come in and tidy up the edges of the wound with a scalpel or a very sharp knife and then we'll just use some sealant on that to make sure it's covered this is uh callus mate uh other brands are available this and the kirikuchi naurol are the two brands that I tend to use. Right, so wounds on azaleas will heal as long as there is activity above the, the wound, uh, but it won't callus over beautifully. Uh, and when you're making large cuts, which we're not in this case, uh, in a, but in other situations, you have to worry about sort of die back beneath. But in this situation, there's nothing really to, to be too concerned about. Uh, we just have to make sure that it, that it heals over in an attractive way. So now that's done. What we can do is come in and wire those branches and put those into position. Now these here, these, these little shoots here could be a little bit too delicate to, to wire on this one on this occasion. So we'll just wire those main ones. We are going to look to put a little bit of a bend in that section there. So we need to use at least 2.5 mil wire. If you wire like this, then that wire is going to go and be going across the, the that callus there, so it's going to impede the healing. Okay, so what we'll do is we will come over, so we'll come under rather than over the top of it. We have to avoid that branch. This is where it gets really delicate because these branches will tear off very very easily. June is not the best time to be wiring an azalea because those branches are still very soft and very delicate. The best time really is sort of September, October. So if you are not particularly skilled at wiring, then leave it until then. Okay, but we've got one coil of wire around there. Oh, we can just tweak that around. And down a little, and then we can wire those two shoots with our two mil. So we'll just go and wire the other branches, applying the same principles and same ideas. For the most part, it's gonna be a lot of two mil wire, nothing too heavy. Um, because so we can't bend those big thick heavy branches. So when we're looking at positioning the branches, what we're looking at doing is flatten them out, making them all into a lovely sort of fan shape where the 
a lot of the branches are very sort of similar length and similar separation between them. Okay, so we have we'll try and get a similar separation between the between all the branches. Everything's lovely and even. And then when all of those new shoots come out, it's going to get filled up very, very quickly. Okay, as we start to, to, to move some of those branches around, it becomes apparent that we don't need some of the shoots coming off of the trunk. So we can remove those as and when necessary. So that first round of pruning and cleaning up is the really obvious unnecessary branches then as we work along we'll perhaps remove another couple or three branches that are being well we have two doing the same job essentially but ideally we don't want to go across the trunk when looking at bending a branch so we have one sort of thick heavy one that's coming out of the back here okay still a bit of flexible flexibility there so we can bend it just tweak it around a little bit further around the back So we've got a very upward growing branch coming in here. And so, so what I'm going to try and do is try and bend the branch down as I'm applying the wire, which will help to get it halfway into position. Okay, this is very you've got to be very very delicate with the uh, the application of the wire. So really sort of twisting it round and putting the movement in the wire with my fingers rather than using the branch as the pivot point with which to twist the, 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 the wire around. And also try not to lever the branch out of, the, of its socket on the trunk. So now when we come to, to, to bend it, what I'm doing, I'm putting my, my finger on the, on the wire at the base of the branch, you can see in there, my thumb, okay, pushing that in, pushing the base of that branch back into the trunk, and then my finger is going in underneath one of the coils, acting as a pivot point, and I'm pushing, pushing the branch back into it, into the trunk, and then pulling down, bending down with my thumb, getting the leverage action in there. But everything I'm doing is about protecting the base of that branch to stop it from tearing out of the trunk. Small, gentle massaging movements and we get where we want to be. Okay, there's a couple of very fine branches in here that are gonna need manipulating. So this is where we'll drop, actually just drop down to to a 1.5 mil wire, unusually for me, particular to the, with the thinner wire, because the azaleas can thicken up really quite quickly. Make sure it's nice and loose on the branch. Okay, it doesn't have to be tight up pressing against it. We don't want it to thicken up too much and, and sort of cause any damage. With azaleas, generally the the, the finer foliage, the, the anything that you're going to be using. 1.5 mil wire on it's going to be lovely and flexible anyway and so the, there's no you, you don't need the wire on there for the structural integrity to stop it from snapping it's just there to kind of guide it into position okay so it's performing a slightly different job to the thicker wire where the branch is actually 
likely to snap. Anything brown and woody is likely to snap when you go to bend it. And so you, the wire is actually kind of like on there for to, to stop that from happening. Whereas with the, the lighter, greener stuff, that's very unlikely to happen unless you go, unless you do something very extreme. Okay, so it's not going to snap. So the wire isn't there to, 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 to stop that from happening. It's just there to, to guide it roughly into position where you want it to be. So a looser application where it's not actually touching the branch as much or as tightly is much more appropriate. This sheet that we have up in the top here is something that's going to need to be uh, manipulated quite heavily. Okay, there's still a little bit of flexibility in there, but this was last year's growth to hit to here, and then this is this year's growth. So there is a little bit of wood to that, and so we are going to need to use uh, two mil wire on that, at least, if not two point five. Let's go with the two and just make sure it's nice and tight at the base. We might need to put two wires on there to, to bend that and move it around. So I've got to make sure it's nice and secure at the base of the branch. Okay, so now with that branch, we've managed to get, we put a lot of movement into it. Okay. Yes, this is all very regular movement. Okay, but it's regular movement for a reason. We want consistent density of foliage. We want uh, consistent branch spacing. We want everything to be very consistent with this tree. Okay. So now what we'll do is we've got a couple of leaves in here. We'll come back in and we'll cut this one back short because it's too long. Okay, uh, and then we'll get new shoots coming from here and also popping everywhere along the top there and off of the sides. So now we have to look at wiring the apex and those branches in there. Uh, and essentially it's the same sort of thing, flattening them out, opening them out, but just doing it in much more of a sort of 360 degree way rather than sort of 180 degrees as we do with the branches. Uh, the wire, the, the branches up in the top are slightly th uh, thinner. Uh, and so we will be going in with a little bit more of the 1.5 mil wire and we just want to be extra careful not to snap any of them off because we have fewer branches to play with. Multiple shoots up in the top get split back to two or three. When we're making the apex we can live with three shoots coming from one node for a short period of time but we can't live with four. That will then get a little bit too dense. 
the grow and replace cycle on azaleas is very short so we are cutting back branches on a very frequent basis thinning branches out on a very th frequent basis and so they won't be there long enough to develop uh, inverse taper or cause problems in the same way that it might do with other trees so particularly in the apex where we need to build up that density of foliage in order to create a big full uh, image we will quite often we quite use three shoots coming from one spot as opposed to just the two the fundamental structure should always be based on two by two but when we're looking to build up a lot of density and add meat to that skeleton, then often we will look at multiple shoots from similar nodes. May I'm just trying to make a video. Okay, so that was it. There wasn't really a massive kind of like finished picture. I've got one here, um, but the finished article is behind me. Uh, so uh, I'll just put that one up. Um, okay, so that's the like the finished tree as it is now, um, and so this is obviously just like a, uh, like the initial styling, uh, and uh, we got to. I did mention at the start of the of the video about uh, I was going to repot it, and that was the plan um, uh, to do that. But obviously, um, I'm finding it very difficult to balance everything uh, at the moment. Um, and so I didn't get around to it, uh, but I will do that tomorrow uh, and I'll put up some videos um, for those people who donate to the live stream uh, to, to see or maybe put it on one of the, the following live streams. Uh, one of the questions was um, from Pierre, oh, Pierce, sorry, Pierce Be uh, Bevan, uh, about repotting. Um, you can do it after, to, after flowering, but what I would tend to do is uh, only light repots, uh, and so this is basically going to be um, the the soil is, is pretty solid in there, uh, as in it's got a, a good root ball. Um, not going to go in and, and sort of uh, tear it all apart um, and and do like a massive repot. It'll just be like take a little bit off the bottom and put it into a new pot. Uh, so I would tend to do only very light repots in the in the in the summer, uh, and on those trees that get cut back quite a lot um, and are very strong. If the tree is weak. Um, then I would always do it in the in the spring. Uh, one of the reasons for this is its ability to cope with the hot weather that's that's happening at the moment, um, and also the, the the higher temperatures that you may have wherever you are in the world in the summer. Okay, so uh, that's the kind of like initial styling. There was a lot of kind of in depth detail about the wiring techniques and the fingering techniques and all this kind of stuff uh, in there. Uh, basically, I wanted to do that so I don't have to do it again. Okay, if you want any more information about all that kind of like wiring techniques and things like that, then watch this video again. All right, so future streams that we're going to do on styling, I'm going to skip all of that and we'll just be looking at kind of like going through the styles uh, and making some sort of decisions and things like that. And I won't cover like how to wire and things like that because it's just repeating yourself because that is basically six years of apprenticeship distilled down into an hour. Uh, and so there you go. That's pretty much kind of like what we're looking at doing with sort of the creating of the branching structure and how we go about wiring. As I said, all of those important factors that are in there, delicate fingers, delicate hands, knowing what to wire uh, and how to wire it, and also the, the pruning. Pruning is the absolute sort of key for, for the success with the zayas, where to prune, how hard to prune back, uh, and things like that. Now, what we'll expect from now, I can hear the tree trying to grow from now. Okay, the minute you cut it back, it starts to, starts to push starts to want to grow and so it's going to send out from the the ends where there's leaves as i said before it's going to start to send out three four shoots all from that point uh if it's particularly vigorous so what i'm going to want to do fairly early on and let those start to develop so you know kind of like know 
uh, sort of which direction and, and kind of like how vigorous they're going to be growing in. I'll just go in and do some sort of bud selection, some shoot selection on that. So I'm, I'm only going to have sort of like two shoots growing in the directions that I want them to. And as they begin to extend out, or maybe you have to go in and pinch them, okay, to stop them extending massively out. But as long as I pinch them before, say, like the end of July, then they're going to set flowers beautifully, no problem at all. Okay, if I let them grow all the way out to say October and then cut back, then it's very unlikely that it, it's going to sort of set out an incredible amount of flowers. Okay, so if you get an explosive amount of growth immediately after kind of like this post flowering prune, which is what we're doing now, and it starts to shoot out, you want to get in there and, and kind of like pinch it back fairly quickly so that that growth then doesn't extend anymore. It's going to harden off, it's going to set a flower bud for next year, and then we'll have a structure which is compact and is going to flower nicely for us next year. There'll also be an incredible amount of adventitious budding coming from all over the place, inside the tree and outside. So there'll be a, a situation where I'll have to go through and do some selection of, of um, shoots and buds and things on the inside there. Okay, so that's going to be the, the next sort of stage of it. Uh, in terms of aftercare for this, uh, it's still got a healthy uh, crop of foliage on the top, so it can withstand and it can cool itself down in, in the sun. Uh, thankfully, from tomorrow, it looks like as though the temperature is going to be dropping down, so it'll just go straight out onto the bench, no problems. Uh, and it'll just be watered and fed pretty much as per as per normal. Uh, some questions were answered asked in the uh, in the chat about um, feeding and things like that. I think I answered most of them. Um, uh, uh, basically, feed your azaleas really well. I talked about it in the first stream. Feed them really well with a, a good organic fertiliser. If you have difficult, if you have a quite high pH of your water, use something ericaceous, which will help to keep the, the soil acidic, which is what the azaleas like. I don't tend to do that. I don't really need to because the I kind of make sure my the, the, the water here when I have to use the, the, the tap water is uh, slightly acidified. Uh, and if I do notice any problems with these areas, then maybe I'll throw a little bit on. But generally, I just, I've got so much to do, I don't mess around with it too much. Uh, the other thing that's very important as well, uh, fish emulsion, fish hydrolysate, uh, seaweed extract as well. Okay. Uh, any questions that come in and out, I can't answer because we are running out of time. There is going to be more questions, uh, more streams on azaleas, and a lot of the questions that have been asked and I maybe haven't got, gone over will get covered in those, particularly about things with um, uh, more colours and different types of flowers coming out on 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 different trees and things like that. Uh, but really, that's the kind of the the basic kind of how to go about styling a, a, a an azalea, um, getting um sort of healthy growth uh you know sort of doing it on a tree which has a lot of healthy growth rather than something which is sick so the next stream that we'll do on azaleas we'll actually look at a couple of uh weakened trees and look at how we can kind of get them back up to health back to strength we're not looking at any sort of styling we're just focusing on it as a um as, as, a, as a living thing trying to get, get, get some energy back into it uh, and if we can get it back uh, strong and healthy and get those branches pumping and pushing, then we can start to think about what we do with uh, with the styling. And as I said right at the start, in terms of styling and things like that, there's no right or wrong answers. One of the things that, uh, and somebody mentioned this to me today actually, very astute of him, I've been very careful to not be too specific with talking about stylings and things like this, leaving it up to people's imaginations. And Azalea's do lend themselves to, to, to that kind of do whatever you, you kind of want with them to a certain extent but as i said like for example with this one getting the best value for money from this tree getting the best value out of it as a, as a piece of material was to, to go along um the the, the state the the, the the sort of styling that, that was already there because it had this main branch uh, in particular already set there the, the structure of it was set it was there was no point trying to do anything else with it we will look at a couple of trees, however, where we're going to look at changing some things around. Okay, so um, as I said earlier, these are uh, free streams. Um, we put them out there for free on YouTube. If you have found it of great use, uh, then uh, please do consider donating uh, to keep us uh, interested in doing them. Uh, there are a lot of uh, very generous people out there who are, um, you know, sort of uh, sending money along. Uh, it is still a very kind of like loose organic sort of thing at the moment. We're not behind a paywall. We're not kind of like going in for subscription uh, type of thing just at the moment because 
uh, with the future being uncertain and uh, it's quite difficult to find all the time and, and everything to do this and um, having become uh, full-time daddy daycare at the moment um, but we're, we're trying to find a way to, to, to get everything done uh, so if you do find it useful, uh, please donate. Those people who do donate get access to uh, a Discord group, which is chat and things like that. If you have donated and you haven't got any information about it, please do not be offended. Um, uh, there's a couple of people who have slipped through gaps and things like that. And uh, it's a very difficult process to get all the emails together and send out stuff. Uh, and so just doing that is like half an hour. And I've just, you know, just one, so I will get around to, to, to sending things out. Please do, do contact me uh, if you haven't got any information, stuff like that. Okay, uh, so that's about it. I'm going to go inside for my dinner. Uh, the only thing to uh, to finish off with is to say thank you very much for, for listening and cheers. Uh, and in uh, recognition of our Belgian friends, uh, tonight's uh, stream has been brought to you in association with Duvel, the fine uh, Belgian beer. Uh, there was a perfect head on this uh, when I poured it about 10 minutes ago. Um, so don't uh, criticise me, any of you Belgians out there. Anyway. Cheers, uh, stay safe, enjoy the rain that's coming, if we get any. 